And I, I don't get why people will just defend Biden. So do you still consider yourself a liberal? Do you use that word to describe yourself? Um, I'm hard pressed to come up with anything else. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, somebody asked me if I was a liberal fucking pussy once, and I slammed them up against the wall and said, no, sir, I am a liberal fucking patriot. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that kind of threw them off a bit. Uh. But uh, I don't. I, don't, I kind of shy away from describing myself uh, with words that indicate a, a political leaning one way or the other. Yeah, it just, I just default to doomer, and uh, that transcends the uh, <laughs> the the uh, whatever you call it, the the football the, team divide. The ideology. Uh, I was just uh, I've been at the my buddy's house for the uh, past couple of nights and we got into talking last night about you know neither one of us he and I both absolutely detest professional sports and you know we've we've never been a fan uh, you know, I'm a southern white male an embarrassment to my to my race I've I've never had any interest in professional sports and you know we were just talking about how there is no difference between you know someone voting at this point but voting between Democrat or Republican and getting into their little camps as there is you know someone at a some clueless fucking moron paying a thousand dollars for a Super Bowl seat that those goddamn mm -hmm. people on that you know all of those rich millionaires running around that field they have no more interest in anybody sitting there in those stands than joe mm -hmm. biden or donald trump has in, has any interest in, in anybody standing in a in a voting booth voting for them and um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not a fan of ball sports either. I just hate them. Uh, it's the, oh god. Anyway, the only thing that the only thing that's worthwhile about ball sports is whenever that big football event occurs. I guess that's the Super Bowl, right? I uh, I think. Uh, well, when when that happens, <laughs> I get the entire town to myself for about three <laughs> and a half hours. There you go. <laughs> Just clear off the the clueless Mars. Okay, let me ask you a, you a question. Because I don't know the answer to this question, and neither did my buddy last night. If, if someone came up to you right now with one thousand dollars and you didn't have a smartphone to cheat and get the answer, if someone came up to you right now and said, "I will give you one thousand dollars to tell me who the Super Bowl champions were this year," would you be able I'd to do it? Will not. I have no, no <laughs> idea. <laughs> I have. I have no clue who won the Super Bowl. I have no fucking clue either team that played in the Super Bowl. Uh, I cannot name one professional quarterback. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So, no. I'm the same way. I, I have. I have so little interest in it that it's almost like it doesn't exist for me. <sighs> I wish you could see where I'm sitting right now. I am stuck in traffic. I'm, uh, I'm right next to one of these double FedEx delivery trucks. So I guess, does that make it a 36 wheeler? And next to me is a sign for the Pennsylvania Turnpike with all of the ways you can pay. There's six different options you can uh -huh. pay to get on their toll road. And at the bottom, in big letters no cash there's there, there's six other ways to pay to get on a fucking toll road uh, so I, I'm sitting in bumper to bumper traffic in Scranton Pennsylvania and far as I can see are these are these goddamn 18 wheelers it this is the mm -hmm. first rain I have been in, uh, in in like two weeks uh, so and, anyway, and I, God, what was, I think I was in New York once, and they had the toll booths that had the big baskets underneath them, so you could just drive yeah. by and throw a handful of change in. Yeah, yeah, those days are gone. Yeah, I just run right through them and wait for the ticket to come in the mail. <laughs> 
Uh, unbelievably, I got away with the pence I got on the Pennsylvania Turnpike by mistake. Now I'm at the Walmart. I've gone, I've gone from the FedEx to the Walmart uh, truck. Uh, yeah, I got on by mistake. Uh, I was trying to meet up. I don't know if you know my story with Dulcinea, my never-ending uh, trying to meet up with this, with this woman of my dreams, and I got on the fucking Pennsylvania Turnpike and got the bill from it. Last time I opened the bill from the attorney's office, it was at $65. Uh -huh. I thought they were going to burn me when I went to register my truck in New York, but I snuck through, so... Uh, I never had to pay the Pennsylvania Turnpike bill. Uh, oh, I wanted to ask you, I asked a couple other people, nobody had any idea. Um, do you remember the book Air Conditioned Nightmare by Henry Miller? Uh, I don't, th that, I do not think I read that. One more time, jog my memory with the title. Air Conditioned Nightmare? Air Conditioned, no, that's not ringing a bell. It sounds like something I would enjoy. Uh, oh, it's brilliant because he wrote it when he got back from France and he basically bought a car on the East Coast and drove it across the country and just wrote essays about what he saw. What year? 1940s, maybe? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I, and, and, and yeah, I, that sounds like a good one. And I can imagine what uh, that would sound like today. Well, that's what I was thinking. I wonder if anybody would be interested in financing. Uh, uh, retracing oh. steps across the country. We'll throw it out there, see if we can... Uh... You know, Henry Miller was a doomer. He was a serious doomer. Oh, the book is just a scathing takedown of America. And uh, who's the other one? H.L. Mencken. Uh, he was... Uh... Oh, right, right. I, well, I love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean... After you reminded me of H.L. Mencken when you read that one uh, essay on the on the Collapse Chronicle, I thought, wow. Which was right here. It, it was right directly, uh, you know, pretty much what I have been driving through today uh, What was where he was talking about. It was mm -hmm. right where I have been driving through. I, I wish I had remembered that and, and maybe actually gone to the very town he was talking about. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure it, was, it could not have been far off my route. Yeah, there was so many great writers doing it. Have you ever heard of Alexander Wolcott? I have heard of Alexander Wolcott, and, and again, that's someone I have not visited in years and years. Well, he wrote a book called Wild Rome Burns. Wild Rome Burns, all right. Yeah, it was just a collection of essays that he had published, I think, in The New Yorker. But some of those are pretty hardcore takedowns. I'll have to check that out. Of course, you are familiar, I'm sure, with Joe Badgent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, that that dude, he, he got it. He got it. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering the other day, um, what would Mark Twain, Hunter Thompson, and Ed Abbey be writing about today? <laughs> <laughs> I know, we just... Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to, uh, you know, like be cast in their shadow. Uh, I'm sure my contribution and your contribution don't quite hold up to those stalwart names, but we're we're both doing our our, our part to uh, to chronicle it. Like, yeah. Like the great masters. <laughs> Yeah, and that's all we can do is chronicle it. Unfortunately, if it's all digital, it'll disappear when the whole thing falls apart. But. Well, I'm chronicling it right now. This this is by far, this is the ugliest weather. This is the ugliest day I have seen since I left New York on January 20th. The ugliest day. Uh, is Scranton kind of industrial? Well, I think it's former industrial. I don't know if there's any industry left in Scranton, uh -huh. you, you know, which is that uh, double-edged sword there. I don't, did you see my video I put of the Bethlehem steel mill? Oh, no. Is that up? I put it up yesterday. I, I, I've been, I always thought the Bethlehem steel mill was in Pittsburgh. It's in Allentown. Uh-huh. So uh, I actually found... Uh, 
that uh, I was just a few miles from the Bethlehem. So I, I took my camera to, uh, you can, they, it's just open. I mean, you can just walk. You can't go like, you know, really deep in the bowels of it. Uh-huh. But uh, you just walk right up to this place. I, I, I Is it mean, abandoned? Yeah, it's completely abandoned and, and uh, just growing over. Mm -hmm. with, it's only been abandoned for 20 years. I thought that damn place had been abandoned for 100 years. It looks uh -huh. like it has been. No, that thing was up and running up till 20 years ago. Wow. And, uh, and, and already the decay that you can see that is set in in, uh, in, in only 20 years. Uh, mm -hmm. And you try to imagine what it's going to look like in 200 years. I, you know, there's already good-sized trees taking sprout uh, uh -huh. in, inside all of these uh, rusted-out uh, boilers and shit. Yeah, do go look at that. I mean, it's creepy. Uh, I want to. I want to whet your appetite for your disaster tourism, uh, but you definitely <laughs> want to do the Bethlehem Steel Mill if you do that. Okay, so like the death of industrial civilization came early or something. No, the, did you read that book where that guy? I think it was probably 20 years ago that he did it. That he did the disaster tourism of uh, Eastern Europe. No. You don't know Is it the, good? Oh, it was great. Yeah, that that's what he did. He took uh, a disaster tourism all through that uh, Eastern European uh, post-industrial collapse block. Uh -huh. I, uh, oh, real good journalist. Uh, you really should. Uh, you should. Uh, you should check that out uh, before what, before what you take your. Name? I can't place it. I'm. I'm Thinking, I'm thinking his first name was Andrew, uh -huh. uh, but I'm pretty sure. You know, it was after the the wall came down and and all of that that he uh -huh. went over. There. I mean, they're fucked over there. Yeah, just just fucked. I had a, uh, I had a friend that went over to. Uh, I think he was in Amsterdam, and he went to Eastern uh, Eastern Germany, I guess. Yeah. And. He said when he flew in, it was all gray. The whole country just looked gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of like Scranton. But the countryside mm -hmm. around Scranton is actually beautiful. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what's so weird is the it's beautiful rolling hills and stuff. And then you come into this pit from hell. Uh, <laughs> what is that abandoned board plant in Michigan? Uh, that would be certainly a good one. I guess that's in Flint, isn't it? That's a GM plant in Flint. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure what it is. It was, uh, I'm not, yeah, I don't remember. It was in the, in the movie RoboCop. Yeah, yeah. The, the final scenes of the movie RoboCop was all filmed in this abandoned Ford plant. Uh, well, there's going to be a lot more of them coming up. Uh, a lot more oh, yeah. of them coming up. So the the disaster tourist uh, tourism industry will be kicking into high gear soon enough. Oh yeah, and the the, the attractions will be multiplying exponentially. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, anyway, I uh, if we can uh, kind of a, 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 a have an abrupt segue here. Uh, so let me, uh, for, for anybody who does not know, we're going to, uh, we're, we're going to welcome here to Humpty Dumpty Tribe, uh, one of my new heroes in the Doomosphere, Michael Campy. Uh, so anyway, uh, Michael, come on and uh, you, you've been talking for a couple of minutes already. But in, anyway, uh, go, come on and say hi to the Humpty Dumpty Tribe gang, which is not the same gang as you said hi to before. Oh, that's the other one. It's the uh, yes. Collapse Chronicles uh, Tribe. That, that uh, the, the, those band of eco pussies over there. So anyway, you can be more <laughs> relaxed over here at Humpty Dumpty Tribe. So anyway, guys, I wanted to, uh, M Michael Campy, for those of you who don't know, he is a uh, doomer uh, chronicler of, of the collapse of everything over at medium.com. That's Campy, C-A-M, 
PI, so uh, you can go uh, check out Michael Campy over at medium.com. I highly recommend them, but anyway, Michael, I was uh, speaking of that other channel that we, that we don't talk about and that little eco pussy over there, I was hearing you, uh, I, I guess you were being interviewed by Elliot Jacobson and that little eco pussy who we don't talk about over here uh, at, at Humpty Dumpty Tribe and it was hilarious because you started to tell a story over there on that channel about about uh, something that went a little haywire at a poet, some sort of poetry slam, and I noticed uh, the little eco pussy got immediately started squirming in his seat and, and, and started going, going, you know, red lights flashing in his panicked eyes that you were going to uh, say something to uh, to insult, probably at least three groups of, uh, of of people with the story you were getting ready to tell. So I see oh, that yeah. he put the brakes on you, but you're over at Humpty Dumpty Tribe, and I'm quite sure it would, would have been the highlight of the interview, so we're just going to... Uh... And so, guys, I have never heard this story. It might be a total dud. I don't know, but we're going to let Michael Campy uh, fill us in on the band sequence on this is what collapse chronicles banned from publication so michael campy give us a little backstory and and tell us what happened when you went to a poetry slam oh yeah it was a poetry reading in santa cruz and i had gone there once before and i read a piece called okay doomer <laughs> and everybody seemed to kind of like that so i went back to read another piece it's called holocaust what year was are we talking oh that was uh probably three years ago it was just before COVID, so maybe 2019 okay um and i had made up a t-shirt with a picture of a wolf on it and underneath the wolf it said fur lives matter <laughs> and that i think set him off a little bit <laughs> <laughs> because there was a, a fairly large percentage of the LGBTQ community and the black community. And I wasn't going in the door aware of exactly how touchy those people were. <laughs> so you didn't, you know, I lived in Santa Cruz for seven years, so I know exactly. But I didn't know there were any black people living in Santa Cruz. Are there now black people actually living in Santa Cruz? Or did they import? Oh, yeah. They didn't have to import them from San Jose. No, they they they're, they're allowed to live in Santa, Santa Cruz now. All right, so the privileged white liberals let uh, let black folks actually live in Santa Cruz. Okay, well that's good to hear because that's that's an improvement since I was there in the 1980s. So anyway, you show up uh, at this uh, if it's Santa Cruz for people who don't know Santa Cruz, it is one of the limp dick lefty capitals of the world. So, uh, all right, so you show up with your Fur Lives Matter to read a piece at a poetry slam called Holocaust. Already, mm -hmm. already you have uh, two strikes against you. So what happened? Uh, how far did you get into your slam? Well, they only gave you four minutes to read, so I got just about to the end of it, and they shut me off. They didn't um, let you finish. No, they did not. What was their problem? Um, their problem is I was comparing humans generally to Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> they were, I guess, a little put off. Um, I called them human supremacists, which I think kind of bothered them a bit. And they, and you know, just basically telling them through the course of the piece that human beings aren't all that. <laughs> and after I got finished with it, no one there would talk to me. So did you finish it or did they literally cut you off at exactly Oh, they literally, minutes? yeah, they literally cut me off and then, I, then no one there would talk to me. So you just kind of uh, stood around in an uncomfortable silence and then just kind of slunk out the side door or something? Yeah, I just left after I realized that they had uh, 
taken umbrage with what I had to say. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I was, uh, you know, I was a writer for this this little uh, lefty rag called the Santa Cruz Express. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you, do you were by any chance if you were around when the Express was up and running in the eighties? No, no, I was uh, out of town by then. Yeah, so I, uh, I, I, I know exactly the. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the the pain you were see I was the token redneck on the on this little limp dick lefty rag uh, god no I was I was despised uh, by many times over but are you going do you, do you have now I, I've read this piece uh, so it's uh, but I'm I'm wondering uh, do you happen to have it I sh I, I should have made sure you had it oh, yeah, chewed up uh, before you called. So can you share uh, as long as we're... Yeah, do you, do you want me to read it? Yeah, it's, uh, if you saw, I am riding through, as they say, the nastiest, ugliest day. I am an hour from my house on the nastiest, ugliest day I have seen uh, in, uh, since January. So, uh, yeah, it would entertain me. So, uh, do us a favor and, and read Holocaust and find out what upset the little limp dick lefties in uh, Santa Cruz, California. Okay, so we'll just start in then. Uh, All right. Your government's contract killers from Wildlife Death Squad Services had quite a bloody year, killing more than 400,000 native species, including 64,000 coyotes, 24,000 beavers, 3,000 foxes, 600 bobcats, 433 black bears, 324 gray wolves, 200 cougars, and six grizzly bears. When Hitler killed six million plus people, we erected monuments to their memory. We celebrate their lives and we mourn their loss, but no one bats an eye when the Orkin Pest Control Man comes along and slaughters millions of small creatures daily all across the country. Bright green environmentalists cheer when wind farms and solar arrays are established to free us from carbon dependence. The Altamont Pass wind farm, which was built in 1981, consists of 4,800 turbines, producing 1.1 terawatt hours annually. It also kills over 100 golden eagles, 380 burrowing owls, 300 red-tailed hawks, and 300 American kestrels each year. The Avampa solar plant in the Mojave Desert kills 28,000 birds each year, about one every two minutes, according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Yay for solar and wind! Our narcissistic obsession with providing for ourselves to the detriment of all life on the planet is a foul and sickening thing. The birds and other non-humans do not cheer when somebody proposes a Green New Deal. They do not cheer when some urban dweller puts solar panels on their roof. They do not cheer when someone buys a Prius. They do not cheer when we come up with yet another in a seemingly endless stream of schemes to continue destroying their families' lives and homes. And the following is an incomplete timeline of events from a magazine called Backcountry Chronicles. In 1870, while the first asphalt road was laid in Newark, New Jersey, and the U.S. population reached 38.6 million, the last sea mink died. In 1914, one year after the publication of Our Vanishing Wildlife by William Hornaday, and the U.S. population reached 99.1 million, the last passenger pigeon died in the Cincinnati Zoo. In 1918, the same year that the U.S. and Canada passed the Migratory Bird Treaty to establish a species list and harvest limits, and the U.S. population reached 103.2 million, the last Carolina parakeet died. In 1920, when the U.S. population reached 106.4 million, the California state animal and the bear that graces our state flag vanished from the state. In 1933, Aldo Leopold published Game Management, the text that established him as the founding father of wildlife ecology, and the U.S. population reached 125.6 million. The last known heath hen disappeared. 1937, the Pittman-Robertson Act, which placed a federal excise tax on sporting arms and ammunition, was passed. One year later, as the U.S. population reached 129 million, the last cougar was killed in Maine. 
1970, the year the Environmental Protection Agency was created, and the U.S. celebrated the first Earth Day, the U.S. population reached 204 million, and the last blue pipe vanished from the Great Lakes. 1987, two years after Congress had established the Conservation Reserve Program, and the U.S. population reached 244 million, the last Bachman's Warbler disappeared. In 2008, one year after the IPCC report concluded that climate change is real and mostly caused by humans, the U.S. population reached 304 million and the last genetically pure Columbia Basin pygmy rabbit died at the Oregon Zoo. In 2019, when Donald Trump was gutting environmental protections and the U.S. population reached 328 million, George, the last of the Oahu tree snails, died on New Year's Day. The number of animals killed on the highways of America is estimated at one million per day, which kind of makes Hitler look like an amateur. <laughs> there are no roadside shrines to mark their, mark their passing. There's no museums to herald their memory. There will be no ambulance dispatched to rescue them. There will be no one to comfort them as they drag their bleeding, broken bodies to a roadside ditch to die alone in unimaginable anguish. No flowers will mark their final resting place. There'll be no vigils or prayers offered for their souls. The human supremacists will argue that animals have no souls, as if this makes it okay to slaughter them. They live as do all humans. They have families and relatives and homes, just like humans. But because we make no effort to understand them or feel compassion for them, we can just kill them with impunity. The only difference between their deaths and ours is no human will mourn their passing. And that's the end. <laughs> and you, and uh, you were met with this total, complete silence at the... Uh, <laughs> do you remember by any chance uh, what followed? Who? What the, what the subject of the piece that followed yours <clears throat> was generally about? Or have you lost that piece of... I don't. <laughs> I wonder if that person following you was uh, like, okay, what exactly do I say to, uh, but I'm sure it got back on track, and uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, well, it's hard for people to cope because we think so highly of ourselves. Yes, yes, uh, when we're held up to a mirror, uh, cool. God. Anyway, guys, listening to that, uh, now, now Michael is uh, somewhat like me and in, 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 in that he goes back and forth. Not, not all of his essays are quite that bleak. Sometimes he does surrender to uh, doomer humor uh, to keep, probably to keep from uh, blowing his brains out. Most likely that too. Yes. <laughs> Lord. Oh, uh, so, uh, so who, yeah, yeah. Who, who is the Humpty Dumpty tribe these days? Is it a, there's a not many, shrinking audience? Oh, yeah. Oh, it, it is a shrunken, uh, I, I don't know who this tribe is anymore. Uh, who, and I have no idea who the hell listens, uh, to, to, uh, to this shit anymore. Uh, you know, that little eco-pussy, he seems to be doing fine over there, but, uh, <laughs> you know, even the Doomers, they, uh, they, they had heard enough and, uh, and, and went over there and, and, and followed, uh, followed the Pied Piper over to Collapse Chronicles. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, when I get, if I get 300 views on a video, uh, now it's a good day. Uh -huh. uh, I, well, I was reading, I think it was on Medium a couple weeks back, there was somebody that was whining about how many climate change articles were on Medium. Uh, and I think he somehow counted them up and said there was like 106,000 climate yeah, change Yeah, I remember, articles. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I, I just kind of laughed, I said, well, since it's the only story that has any real impact on our lives and will impact us more and more with each passing day, you'd think there'd be a lot more than 106,000. I, I think the point of that essay was, and, and 
I'm, and, and, and I kind of feel like with with 106,000 people out there covering it, it it's like I, I think the point was what more can you you know can you add? But I guess it will just be a, an unfolding, developing story. Obviously, I think we're gonna see some unfolding uh, this uh, uh, over the next few months. It sounds like it could be a doozy. Yeah, yeah. I'm just uh, I mentioned to somebody that I kind of hoped the industrial civilization would collapse before I had to look for a job. <laughs> Uh, what are you doing with yourself now, other than writing for Medium? Are you uh, just trying to stay well, out of the fallout? Um, yeah, I write for there. I've got enough money to hold me over for about another three months. And um, I'm probably going to get the t-shirt way past what the fuck t-shirts up on the Medium site pretty soon. All right. So hopefully that'll make, yeah, you have to email me your address, I'll send you one when I get them yeah, up. I need, yeah, so I can uh, add it to my growing. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, you know, you need to be a little bit cautioned about the, the Humpty Dumpty Tribe t-shirts were, an, I mean, we, we know when I was, when people actually listened to this channel, they were, a, it was a total complete bust. Really? Yes. Yeah, so just be don't don't run out and and get a run of a thousand of them. It, you know. Oh, I'm not. No, I'm going to make it print on demand. So yeah. if you want one, you order it through the company and they make it. Send oh, okay. It to you. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> that that's what I just did. You know, I started. And, and anybody listening to this, I think that you can still. I think uh, as far as I know, they once they make the template for it, it, it probably just stays there for eternity. If, if anybody out there for any reason wants a Humpty Dumpty Tribe, a Collapse Chronicles uh, t-shirt, or a, uh, I think even Sancho Panza, you can get a Sancho Panza t-shirt, uh, uh -huh. just, just email me at Humpty Dumpty Tribe at gmail.com and I will send you the link how to do that. I, I, you know, I don't, uh, I, I don't ask for any cut on top of it. I just, if anybody wants uh -huh. one of these, but uh, yeah, trying to, trying to make uh, money in the Doomosphere, as uh, I heard you talking about on that other, other than Umer Hack, I don't know who's doing it. Yeah, and he's kind of gone down a strange path lately in praising Biden. Uh, yeah, I, I, you notice none of those essays have been mentioned anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we got well, we we got Umer Hack uh, praising Biden, and we've got James Howard Consular uh, down on his knees in front of uh, either in front of or behind. Uh, Donald Trump. So what are you going to do? I, I was really surprised by Kunstler going that direction. Yeah, it came out of nowhere and uh, it, 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 was, it was faster and worse than, uh, than thought. It took me by, it took me totally by surprise. I wonder if that can be considered some sort of pandemic and then they end up with long Trump. <laughs> long Trump. <laughs> Oh God! Yep, yep, yep. Uh, uh, oh Hi. man. So, what's in yeah, your immediate future? I would absolutely love uh, you to make it up here. You don't want to be up here on a day like this, but uh, it's going to be gorgeous here in a couple of weeks for the next six months. Maybe when the wildfires get really intense, the smoke oh, oh. will blow you to New York. Well. I'm kind of, I don't know if I should or not, I'm counting on, my brother killed himself in December. I don't know, Jesus. That's and good. all that, all the estate sort of stuff is coming together now. If his house sales are sells, I should probably have enough money to support myself for another year. Yeah. In which case I'll be taking a trip this summer. Yeah. Uh, I got, uh, well, I know where Kunstler lives. Uh, you want to 
I think we, to to I think we should knock on the door. You know, it's uh, you know I. I spent the night at, at Kunstler's house. You can uh -huh. see it right there. Me, me sitting on the couch. I remember I put that video out. Of, if you, do you know who Morris Berman is? Are you a fan of? I've heard the name. Oh, yeah. you, oh you would love him. So yeah, Morris. After he, he, he saw that video of me uh, sitting on Kunstler's couch. He, he goes, God damn you. He goes, 20 years I've been trying to get an invitation. Uh, from consular to his house, and he just doesn't invite anybody over there. And, it, and he goes, and there you are, sitting on his couch. What what happened with with me and consular was, uh, you know, I interviewed him. Uh, when was it? Uh, I anyway, back when I was doing interviews, I actually interviewed him on New Year's Day. Probably it was either 2017 or 2018 that uh -huh. I interviewed him all New Year's Day. He was the lead-off interview of the year, and you know, at the end of the end, I was in Austin, Texas, and he was in—he uh, lives in Saratoga, New York. And uh, you know how people are just at the end of an interview. Well, if you're ever in Saratoga, look me up. Uh -huh. uh, he told me that on January 1st, so. Well, guess what? In, in uh, July, I found myself in Saratoga, New York, and I said, well, he told me if I'm ever in Saratoga to look him up. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so, out of the blue, uh, he, he gets a, I, I contact him and say, listen, it looks like I'm going to be going uh, right through your town, and I would love to meet up. And well, he had extended the invitation. So he had to, you know what I'm saying, he had yeah, yeah. to uh, invite me to spend the night. And uh, so he was an absolute genial host, you know what I'm saying. Cooked a mm -hmm. nice home cooked meal and uh, he had his girlfriend over there for the evening and then uh, she left and he just, he's a good blues guitar player. And I told him that I played some harp, and we sat. We just sat in his living room, uh, playing uh, old uh, blues music. You know, you know, acoustic uh -huh. blues. He's good. And, and uh, it was just the two of us sitting around playing blues music till two o'clock in the morning. And then I got up the next day and interviewed him. And that was it. And uh, he seemed like a, you know a, a genuinely nice guy and that he, mm -hmm. he enjoyed meeting me and stuff. Well, I tried that shit four more times with him, Michael, over the balance of the summer. Mm -hmm. I tried four more times to get an invitation, and each time that I tried to invite myself back to his house, the, the reason why it wasn't gonna work you know, uh -huh. got increasingly absurd that his excuse for why it was not a good time for Hambone to come see him, you know what I'm saying, he made it mm -hmm. more and more, uh, you, you, you know what I'm saying, and obviously, yeah. till I finally took the fucking hint after the fourth time, uh, I can't, it was quite funny, I, I have all of these emails, I should, I should read those emails from Kunstler sometime, uh, you know, politely telling me, uh, you, you pulled this shit on me once, dude, but it ain't ever gonna happen again. <laughs> uh, you should invite him up to Bugs in the car. I should, uh -huh. I, I don't think he would come, but uh, you never can tell. He lives right down the street from, I don't know if you know Sheldon Solomon. Uh, no. Yeah, you, you ought to check out my interviews. I have two interviews. Well, you, you know, that guy on that other channel with this fellow named Sheldon Solomon. He is great. You would love this guy. He lives uh -huh. right down the street from uh, Trump. I I mean, Trump, listen to me. I'm calling Kunstler Trump. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. We, mm -hmm. we, we would have a lot of fun uh, hanging out with Sh I mean, you can tell just by listening to this guy that uh, he would be a fucking hoot, uh, you know, to hang with for a couple of days. 
uh-huh. he teaches at some little uh, some little liberal art one of those little little liberal arts colleges up there in Saratoga, New York where he teaches there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So he's yeah, look look that up, Sheldon Solomon. Well we're down to forty three degrees, uh, where I am I'm, I'm about ten miles from New York. We're at forty three degrees and falling. Uh, Jesus. What road are you on? I am on 81 North, coming into the lovely town of Binghamton, New York. Oh. Have you ever been to Binghamton, New York? I'm not sure, because we drove around the country back in the early 80s, and we got on Highway 10 in Santa Monica, drove it all the way to the East Coast, Yeah. and then we got on some road and drove it all the way to the northern border of the United States. But I can't remember what road it was. Yeah, well, this is, uh, this is 81 I'm on. <clears throat> Alright, I just passed a cop. He is letting me zip on by. I'm, I'm not speeding too much. Yeah, Binghamton is not quite the pit that, uh, not quite the pit that Scranton, Pennsylvania is, at least. Uh-huh. Uh, but <laughs> is there it will be. Is there anything cute about it? Anything cute, C-U-T-E? Yeah, yeah uh, I mean, is it like got a little dressed up old time downtown or anything like that? It, it, if it does, I've never seen it. Uh, oh. They, I think there's some sort of river through here, so uh, they probably have some little shishi boutique district. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think it's a real young people happening town. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's just another one of these uh, post-industrial whatevers. Uh, so how much further is it from there to where you're going? I am, I am 45 minutes from Bugs in a Jar Farm. Oh. I am 45 you glad minutes. Glad to be there. Well, I'm going to be freezing my ass tonight. I'm going to be, you know, sleeping in my seven foot by seven foot converted uh, tool shed. And Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have a nice day tomorrow. Then the rain moves in on Friday. And as far as they can see into the future, as far as they can see into the future, it's going to rain every single day. So at least there's no drought. But I have all of this yeah. work to be doing outside. I got a, you know, the Airbnb uh, opens on May 25th, and I got a shitload uh-huh. of work to be doing outside so I can be uh, get back to being a super host for Airbnb mm-hmm. while I chronicle the collapse of everything. You know, I just found out today that Amazon sells tiny houses. Yeah, 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 they do. You can, you can go on Amazon, order a <laughs> tiny house, and have it delivered. Well, do you remember when Sears used to do that? Did they have tiny houses? No, Sears used to have full-on houses. I vaguely you remember had, something about that. They'd ship them to you on a train, and then somebody would put all the stuff on a wagon and drag it out to your property, and you could build a house. I think there's Sears houses all over the country. Well, now there's going to be Amazon houses all over the country. <clears throat> yeah, small ones, because... That's all you can afford. They're only three thousand bucks. I thought that was pretty reasonable. I, th- I think, I think that you're off a of zero. That you what? I think that you misread that. Oh really? I think they're thirty thousand. <clears throat> well, it seems like the ones that I saw, and they were, you know, they were advertised as tiny houses, but basically they're just sheds. There's okay, no, I, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just the lumber and and one, some of them don't even have floors. Okay, okay yeah, yeah, all right. That, no, that, that, I'm pretty sure that Amazon sells a $30,000 Oh, they do, house. yeah, I'm, I didn't see those. I'm, I'm pretty sure that, uh, Amazon, that you can buy a $30,000 uh, tiny house on Amazon. I could be wrong since I'm not really in the market for a $30,000 Amazon tiny house. 
Yeah, but the the ones three three to eight thousand were the the kind of sheds that could be made into a tiny house yeah. if you finish the inside. Yeah, I'm sure the the construction quality is uh, some fine construction quality. Oh yeah, maybe we should start selling doomsday bunkers. Uh, I <laughs> I'm game for it. Uh, Do you remember the the Marx Brothers movie Coconut? Vaguely, uh, but it, it was all about real estate speculation in Florida in the 1920s. Yeah, yeah. That's all I, I remember. I'm, I don't remember the particular scenes. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a funny movie, but I thought, wow, this is. Uh, I guess that was a period in time where they basically somehow managed to convince the buying public that a swamp was a viable place to live. And, and they're still convincing it. Uh, the state of Florida is the uh, biggest, uh, is the fastest growing state in the country. They're, they're still convincing, clueless more. I, I bought an acre of land in Florida, not exactly in a swamp. I sold, I sold my place in the Point Lonesome Swamp last summer, but I went and bought an eye on an acre of, uh, of Florida real estate right in the, in the hurricane. I, I was reading that there was two inch hail battering my uh, my Florida real estate holdings this morning. I was thinking, okay, would you rather be there or in Ithaca, New York today? Did you make a profit on the sale? In the Point Lonesome Swamp? Hell yeah, yeah I, uh, I, 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 made a, uh, <laughs> I made a very handsome profit. I won't go into that story. The, uh, the, the few listeners still uh, with us right now know the, know the real reason why I made the, the handsome <laughs> return on that. But that's what I'm living off of. Uh, oh, okay. Is the, is the sale of that, uh, that place out in the Point Lonesome Swamp. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was uh, that's that that is that's what's building these tiny houses. Was uh, oh. was was how much money I made off of flipping that uh, acre of swampland in the in Florida. So, yeah, I just found out this morning that there was an article that kind of dressed it up a little by calling it ten affordable places or ten places where houses will be affordable in five to ten years. Yeah. Instead of calling it ten places that are really shitty real estate development or real real estate yeah. investments, they tried to make it sound pretty. But uh, Chico was one of them. Oh they, really? You made the top ten? Oh yeah, Chico, and then the town is just north of here, Redding. Oh god, yeah. And uh, it's expected to drop anywhere from ten to thirty percent, I guess, over the next ten years. There you go. Oh, My guess is it's going to drop a lot more than that, but. <laughs> well, maybe someday uh, once this whole thing goes to hell and Airbnb income is a pleasant memory. So right now, so I'm going ahead and building cabins for my Doomer friends. So uh -huh. uh, I've got my main cabin in three tiny, so I've got four. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, and and uh, camper, so I've got five units out there. So. Uh, Bugs in a Jar you, Farm could be a, a a little Doomer enclave uh, as soon as Airbnb folds. Uh, yeah, you could even put up a gate there and fill it as a Tony gated community. <laughs> yes, of, uh, of tiny houses. Are All you right. building them yourself? Uh, well, my my buddy uh, is is doing the heavy lifting, and I'm and uh -huh. I'm I'm doing like the siding and the paneling and stuff. But uh -huh. uh, but my buddy, uh, realize 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 if you recognize that right. name, he's he's the one who actually uh, you know does the the big ticket framing, and then uh -huh. I I come along with the uh, with the lightweight work. Uh huh. Uh, that sounds like fun. It's a, it, it is, but I'm ready to get these wrapped up and just uh -huh. settle into becoming an Airbnb super host while everything yeah. uh, goes to hell. Enjoy the ranks us. of the mega rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm going to run. i got to take yeah. this call because it's my All cat right. lady. It's been fun. Come it see is. Me. It's always fun, Sam.
Alright. Later, brother. Take care. Uh -huh. Bye. Alright. That was my buddy, uh, Michael Campy from the lovely town of Chico, California. So, uh, make sure you look up Michael Campy uh, on medium.com. Well, you still can. I am heading to New York, baby. Good Lord. Truck inspection one mile. All right. Coming back into New York. What do you think, little dog? Uh, where is New York, baby? The, uh... Should be any minute uh, as the battery light flashes. Alright, my goal was to get here after the rain had passed through. See so a little bit of blue sky. It's supposed to be a beautiful day. Alright, we are back in New York, baby. Welcome to New York. Welcome to New York. Here we are for the next six months. I do not know if I'm going to be leaving the state of New York until November. So you're going to have to come see me while you still can. Bye, guys.